We're here in the Fiat section of my garage. You know, Fiat's have gotten kind of a bad reputation in the United States. Fix it again, Tony, you know, all that kind of stuff. But Fiat's are actually quite, uh, quite terrific cars. Uh, we're gonna talk about a very special car here in just a minute, but first, a little bit of history. Uh, probably the most famous Fiat was this one here, the Topolino. It was never called the Topolino, but because it looked like a little mouse, and the Italians love Walt Disney's cartoon, they, 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 the people gave it the little mouse name. That's where it came from. The car was designed by Dante Giancosa. You know, people always think of the Volkswagen as the first European people's car. And although Ferdinand Porsche did show his prototype in 1936, the Volkswagen did not go on sale until well after the Second World War, whereas this car was available from 1936 on. Uh, this was the first generation of sort of people's car, but it only had 13 and a half horsepower, topped out at about 50 miles an hour. Uh, Dante Giancosa did a number of other cars for Fiat, eventually winding up with this one. This is a 1959 Fiat Milicento. That means 1100. This is my favorite kind of automobile, original and unrestored. By that I mean nothing has been done to it. This car was bought by a gentleman in Pennsylvania in 1959. In 1962, for whatever reason, he put it in his living room. Single guy, you think? And uh, it stayed there until he died. Sat in his living room for, I don't know, 48 years, whatever it is. Uh, fine. Uh, we pulled it out. The only thing wrong with it is somebody put a Coke can or something on the hood, probably watching TV, watching Ed Sullivan or something, you know, and boom, you put it on there and scraped it. But other than that, the car is exactly as it appeared in 1959. The engine uh, had locked up, of course. He didn't bother to drain the water out, so we had to take the head off, do a little bit of metal work, clean it up, put it back together. But other than that, everything is completely as it was, and with the exception of white wall tires, which it had, does not have white walls on it now. You know, when uh, Giancosa first designed the first generation of this car in 1953, it had 36 horsepower. It was considered a driver's car. In fact, uh, no less a luminary than uh, Enzo Ferrari himself wrote a letter of congratulations to uh, Dante Giancasso for designing such a great handling uh, Italian sedan. And it is a wonderful car to drive. This car has 50 horsepower, ooh. But you know, it'll hold five people and it gets about 40 miles per gallon. You know, everybody's talking about buying hybrids and Priuses. You find some of these old cars like this who were meant to save gas back in the day. This would have been a family man's car, a successful family man's car in Italy at the time. The equivalent in America might be a Galaxy 500, a Chevrolet Bel Air, or a Chevrolet Impala. This was, for the Italians, a full-size car. To us, it's a little foreign job, as my dad would always call it. What are you, driving one of them foreign jobs? What, you got a foreign job? But no, that's what it was. And to me, it's a wonderful car. Again, for some reason, women go nuts with these cars, like this one here. Like this guy here. You can drive a Ferrari, women might ignore you. You pull up, drive in this car, you behind the wheel, have a cat sitting here looking out the window, women will jump in the car, I guarantee you. Drive around with a kitty and you, and uh, women will jump in the car. It'll be unbelievable. Uh, I haven't tried it yet with this one. In fact, I don't want any women jumping in my car or else I'll lose half my cars. So, but that's another story. But anyway, I'm just telling you, it works. We did the engine, but we deliberately didn't paint any of the engine compartment. Wanted to keep everything looking totally stock. That's a sweet little thing. I got the choke on, she'll smooth down. Air cleaner, you got your windshield wash. A lot of options which are not available to Europeans at the time. Little tiny battery. Let's take a look at the interior. This interior, again, as it appeared in 1959, we haven't changed a thing. The two-tone paint, the green and the cream. Even the floor mats are original. Yeah, it's an amazing car, no rust. You see, if you keep a car in your living room, it'll last forever. That's why I tell people, hey, just put the car in the living room, that's all. Your kids can sleep in the garage. Got your jack, spare tire. The only thing you don't want to do with a car like this is get hit by an SUV. It's probably time to go for a ride. Angelo, Vincenzo! We're going for pizza. As you can see, the dashboard is uh, fairly spartan. Speedometer, water temperature, dynamo, oil light, odometer, 9,359 miles, lights, reserve, and fuel. That's it, no radio. Under the dash here, you got a number of controls. There's your choke air left and right, heater switch right here, turn indicators as well, windshield washers, high low beam. We've got all the original books. 
Got your Fiat manual, glove box. Even got a uh, night position. That was like a huge deal in Italy. Got your Italian, you gotta have a cigarette, uh, ash, kind of an ashtray. Those Italians in the 50s love to smoke. These little Fiats were the basis for so many uh, exotic cars by Zagato and all the other big uh, coach builders because they're wonderful chassis. They built something like 252,000 of these things. I don't know how many remain. You know, they didn't undercoat them. They rusted out fairly easily. But this is a nicely preserved car. It drives wonderful, goes down the road 60, 70 miles an hour. And as I said, gets 40 miles per gallon. You know, you just start to talk like this when you drive. It's just something about the car. It really does need the white wall tires. Manly horn. Now, come on, this is more fun than driving a Prius, getting almost the same mileage with a lot more elan. Cars don't really look like this anymore. Very simple, very basic. But you could carry six people in it, three in the front and three in the back. It's hilarious. You know, the cool thing is you can buy classics like this for not much money. Maybe 5,500 bucks, 6,000 bucks, they need a little bit of work. But they're wonderful cars to drive. And they will last you forever. Parts are pretty cheap, and everything's available for them. And, hey, at four bucks a gallon, it's the new Ferrari, baby. Main thing you have to remember on redoing old cars like this is just get yourself a new radiator. Or at best, have the old one boiled out. A lot of guys rebuild an engine, they put it back in without even giving a second of thought to the fact that the radiator might be clogged. But that's probably 95% of all your cooling problems. I love the way it looks going down the road. If you read the car magazines, you know Fiat's got some interesting new cars coming out. They've got their new 500, that little Fiat, which is their answer to the Mini. And I understand they're gonna make an Abarth edition of it. Let's hope they bring it to the United States. If not, I'll keep driving this. Well, I'll keep driving this anyway. Ciao, baby.